Earthquakes are caused by what's known as plate tectonics. Basically, there are very large plates, approximately the size of continents, which are slowly moving across the surface of the Earth. Now, where two of these plates collide, one of the plates will actually go under the other one. So rather than just collide and stop, what will actually happen is one plate will ride up and the other one will ride down below there. So it's called a subduction zone where part of the Earth's crust is actually pulled down into, into the lower depths and the mantle of the Earth and lost or recycled into the Earth. Now where this subduction zone happens is friction between the two plates and that's what causes the causes a fault line and that's where you get the earthquakes and volcanoes around Ring of Fire and various uh, other places like San Andreas Fault and various things like that. Now on a geological scale these plates move at a very very steady slow speed so for millions and millions of years it's a very predictable speed that they move but on a human scale the plates remain stationary for years and years as the pressure builds up between the two plates, suddenly overcomes the friction between the plates and they jump and they move. And it's that jump move which causes an earthquake when the pressure has built up too much for the friction to hold it back anymore. A human interaction in the form of mining or fracking or use of high explosives can trigger earthquakes only where they would otherwise naturally occurred. They won't trigger them in areas where this build-up hadn't actually occurred. What it's doing, the explosives or whatever, is overcoming that friction between the two plates and causing them to jump. Now, then the next question is, is this good or a bad thing? Well, generally the popular measure of earthquakes is what's something known as the Richter scale. Now, it's not a linear scale, so generally um, a magnitude 6 quake is virtually the equivalent of 10 magnitude 5 quakes. Basically it goes up by 10s each le level. Now, a small number of earthquakes created by human interaction might be the same as a large one that comes later. So, for instance, if you have a lot of human interaction, you may cause one quake, two quakes, three quakes, four quakes, rather than if there was no human interaction, you have one big quake. So in that way, you might think that it would be good, as you're releasing the, the, the pressure in small doses. However, earthquakes don't happen just in one small area. They happen all along a fault line. It could be a thousand miles long. Now, if you release the pressure in one place, it's like taking away the pillars of a building. You knock away the pillar in the centre. The stress is then put on the pillars on either side. So by, by removing the friction in one place, what you're then doing is putting additional strain on ones either side of it, and that could cause a bigger quake on either side. But you're not still not instigating the quake. These quakes would have still happened anyway. The question is, are you going to trigger a large one or a small one? Lots of small ones? One big one? It all depends. There isn't a very easy way of being able to predict when and where an earthquake would, can happen. All you can predict is how long has it been since the last one in a zone, how much pressure has built up, what will it take to relieve that pressure. So, is fracking, mining, high explosives good or bad? It's up to you.